today we went over lasso again. Uh, we started with meat, uh, angle pick, and we did um, single legs. So, mm, some couple more details on angle picks is when when you get the angle pick. Uh, well, first of all, always have your head up. Never have your head down. But when you get the angle pick. If his posture is upright, that's when you do the ankle pick. That's when you finish the ankle pick. So if his butt down is if his butt is down and his posture is erect, that's when you do the ankle pick. If he's leaning back so that his weight is in his back leg and he's like kind of stepping off of his right leg, then you go to single leg. And then if he's in an aggressive stance where his weight is on the front leg, you also go to single leg. Um, and you always keep your hand on the lapel. Uh, okay, so that's that. Lasso. Um, so one thing is when you're going into lasso and you're creating the angle, you want to back hook on his back while you're still in closed guard. So it's not 100% sure what that means. Um, I'm still having a little difficulty sort of rotating that way. I'm kind of using my hands. Uh, so that's something to work on. So today we did what happens if he drops to his knees. So um, um, so last time, so you had the lasso with your left foot and then your right foot comes in um, and gets like a reverse alahiva hook and then you grip the back of the right ankle, the upright foot, upright knee ankle and then you twist and dump to the left. Um, on the other hand, if he pushes his that upright knee across to your right aggressively, in that case you want to get a sleeve grip with your right hand on his left sleeve and uh, put that, push that underneath him and then sweep to the right. Um, I think that was it actually. We did a lot of drilling on the ankle pick and the single leg um, initially. And then, oh, we also did like an overhead sweep. So when you initially get into lasso, if they um, have bad posture and are just kind of leaning forward and bent over at the waist while they're standing, then uh, you can do like a balloon sweep. You just pull them down further and then sweep them onto their shoulder. Um, oh, and then there was one more where they kneel and then they kneel so they kneel on both knees and just sort of like try to pull away. Um, so if they pull away in like an upright position, then you come up and you kind of wrestle them down. Um, if they pull away with their body, their torso is kind of, kind of like horizontally, so their shoulders are low to the ground. Uh, this is a little confusing to me, so let's see. You have the lasso. Um, your right leg is still on the outside. Um, your left hand has the lasso, your left foot is in the lasso. Okay, so then your right foot, he pulls away, so he's on both knees, sort of like, um, I don't know, down dog-ish. Is that down dog? Yeah, kind of like down dog. So your right foot comes out and goes post against his shoulder. I'm not exactly sure what the right hand does. Um, the left, your left leg comes out of lasso, posts on the hip on that side. Then your right leg, foot, posts on the knee, on his left knee. So you have a left, your left hand still has the wrist grip, like the sleeve grip. So you pull, oh, you sit up. All right, so let's rewind. He's 
kneeling, you're in lasso, he kneels with both knees and he's in, he's pulling away low, he's sort of like down dog. Um, right, so, and he's pulling away. So there's a large gap between you. Your, your arms are like extended, his arms are kind of extended. So you sit up. So you sit up, your right foot goes to his shoulder, you take out the lasso, you put the lasso leg on his hip, and then uh, the right foot dro drops to his knee to post against it, not to kick it, uh, so you can like post and push. Um, your left hand pulls on that sleeve grip like an arm drag, and your right hand comes across and grips his tricep from the inside, and you do an arm drag, uh, and then you can come up to, you can take, you can either um, come up around his back or you can take his back, uh, like pull him down and take his back, or come up and up and around to his back from the top. Uh, yeah, so that one was more confusing. I wasn't. I don't think the guy I was drilling with he didn't give the proper response of going to both knees and also getting lower. He was like saying hi. It was like so. But, but on the other end, when I was doing it, I don't think I put both knees on the ground either. I did go low, but I don't think I put both knees on the ground. So um, also, I'm not exactly sure. I think it's like a less common response that they would have to lower, uh, to put both knees on the foot. Um, yeah, so one thing I noticed so when we're drilling or doing positional is that passing lasso, first you want to loop your hand out and get it out, but sometimes that's not possible. So you can actually use the lasso as leverage to bring his leg to the ground and do like a side smash on it. Um, so that was kind of like my my preferred way in our drill today. I don't know if that's like the most effective. Um, I don't know if, you know, there's a good defense against that, but it seems to be working today. Um, so saying that, I did, uh, I did a coyote sweep against this guy. He was like pretty heavy uh, and a blue belt. So that was pretty awesome. I think that's the first time I did that, that that sweep has worked against someone bigger than me and more skilled than me. Um, I went against Hunter. So Hunter got promoted two weeks ago and I, <laughs> I've been dominating him pretty frequently. Like whenever I roll against him, I pretty much dominate him. And then today I did also pass him, I think three times. And then I got a baseball bat choke. I got a paper cutter choke. Um, so, yeah, so we'll see what happens in terms of that. Um, although if I'm competing in August, I kind of don't want to get promoted yet. So, <laughs> um, I was going to this other guy, um, he showed me something after called a scorpion, which... I'm not sure if it's legal at white belt because it seems to be sort of like an ankle lock or knee lock, knee bar kind of thing. So I need to look into that. But that was pretty cool. Definitely will help in terms of uh, getting out of half guard, I think. So, uh, yeah, so today is pretty good. I feel like I was pretty successful. There's one roll I was getting crushed in by a purple belt. Um, but he was doing a lot of close-in stuff, which I'm not very comfortable with. Um, I don't really know how to deal when I'm like, when he's underneath me. Uh, so when he has like an overhook on my ankle, I don't know how to deal with that. Um, so, and he was doing a lot of that, and you know, I, I, I find myself in that position a lot too. So 
so I gotta figure out how to stop getting in that position, or what makes me get into that position to figure that out. So, that's pretty much it. One other thing I was thinking about is um, that I am, I never really got the, the like the uh, um, primary swoops or the um, basic swoops, I guess. So like tripod, flower sweep, pendulum sweep. Um, and I think it's because when we first learned them, you kind of just learn uh, flower sweep, right? So, and each of these sweeps is kind of easy to defend. Um, I, this might be right. if you if you know what the person's doing. Uh, I mean, I'm not good at tripod sweep because I don't know why. I have to figure that out. Um, defending it, but what we're doing, but. Um, if you are doing uh, a tripod sweep, so they're pushing your waist and pulling your feet, right? So if you set your stance, oh, because I, yeah, I, I'm not going to defend the tripod because I don't naturally stand in a staggered stance. So if you sit, in, if you stand in a staggered stance, um, they should have a harder time uh, doing a tripod sweep one. And then if you are doing a flower sweep, then um, if you sit back, it's almost impossible for them to do a flower sweep. Um, and then if you're doing like a push sweep, uh, if you kind of lean in the direction, you know, you put your body weight in the opposite direction, then it's really hard to do a push sweep. So, I could do it in a drill because the other guy's letting me do it, but then in live roll, um, I had a really hard time. But, and that's because usually I am over, um, undersized uh, relative to my opponent. So, if I need to do, if you need to get something to work, the only way it's gonna work if you're like, have a strength differential. Um, so without a strain to the first, it's never going to work. So why, so, but they are effective, right? So they're effective because they need to work in tandem with each other, right? So like knowing a tripod sweep and knowing a flower sweep. So if they defend against one, then the other one's easier. Although I'm not 100% sure it's tripod and flower, but my point is that these types of sweeps are, um, uh, what's it called? Sort of uh, complementary to each other in that way, um, where you you make up be because they're easy to defend against. Although they're easy to defend against, they are that defense makes it o open, makes the opponent open to another one of the type of these sweeps. Um, so. When I was learning, I kind of like abandoned it. Right? I was like, oh, my clothes guard sucks because I can't hit these sweeps. Uh, so I never really developed it. And I was like, oh, they're just gonna like stand up under my clothes guard anyways, so what's the point? Um, but now that I'm kind of learning these things, then um, the more things I learn, the more things fit together. So uh, if they stand up, I can get a lasso. If they stay down, and lean into me, I can do a flower sweep. If they um, just posture up, I can do like a push sweep. Um, so I still need to work on if I start doing it and then they defend it, then switching to the other one. Um, but I think um, just leaving things underdeveloped because they don't, quote unquote, don't work. Well, they don't work under these circumstances, so, um, but you just have to learn it and then you figure out when the circumstances you can use it are, um, and that opens up everything. So, um, yeah, because I, you know, I, I learned it in class and then I just put it away and never thought about it again. Um, I even had, you know, I, in the first comp, the guy was just leaning into me in my closed guard 
uh, it didn't matter because I was up on points and I knew he couldn't pass me. So I was willing just to eat it. But, you know, I could have used the flower suit to get some. Um, and that probably would have worked really well in that situation. Uh, so, you know, so the problem is there. Like, I had a problem, I had a solution, but I didn't put them together. Um, so just uh, figuring... So maybe it doesn't work out right now. Um, doesn't mean you just ignore it. You need to put it in your back pocket and you need to, like, figure out... Um, uh, or just, like, leave an open... Leave it open for reference so that when a problem comes up, then you can do it. I mean, I'm sort of doing that in my notes, right? Like, I should have referred, oh, close guard, I have these uh, options. Uh, I'm having a problem, close guard, what, you know, go back to like that. I think that's the whole point of my note taking, um, but it, I haven't been reviewing it that way. So it just goes to show that uh, my method should be a good method, I just haven't been doing it enough. Right